Okay, so just starting today's video with a little bit of a PSA, it was brought to my attention that there are quite a few mags running around inside of War Thunder at the moment, as you can see here. I'd just like to make it clear, if you see any of these in a battle, none of them are me. I haven't used mags as my handle in War Thunder for nearly two years at this point. Anyways, on with the video. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome aboard the Typhoon 1B Late. Now, the plane in this particular video doesn't actually matter all that much because well, I'm really not showcasing its capabilities. This particular match wasn't really anything special. Two kills didn't really do a whole lot to get it, but what I did get is probably the clearest image of something I've wanted to show you guys on channel for quite some time. But first things first, we've got to knock out a 109 to do it, which is fine because it gives me a bit of time to explain what's going on here. Now this is part of a two-prong question. That is to say, a question that's sort of been asked from both sides. One was, how am I being spotted inside of clouds in War Thunder? And the other was, how am I meant to spot somebody inside of clouds in War Thunder? And both come down to the same answer. There is an issue with how War Thunder's clouds handle the game environment. Now to understand what's happening or what you're meant to use, at least at the moment until Gaijin eventually changes it, which I'm sure they will at some point, you need to sort of understand how a game is lit. Now, in order to get realistic shadows and realistic looking textures within a game, lighting is incredibly important. If you mess up the lighting, nothing will ever look right. And there is my first kill. So, at this point, I'm starting to look for enemies and I'm going to head into the clouds to do it because not a lot of the enemy team is actually still alive at this point. So anyways, as I was saying, to get realistic lighting you need to light the environment in game as it would be lit in real life. And in real life your lighting, at least in an aerial environment, and of course during daytime comes from the sun. Once you have all of your lighting grouped at the sun, at that point you use scattering techniques to simulate atmospheric scattering, so on and so forth, to get your world environment to look right. And Gaijin actually does a pretty good job of this. Overall, their lighting is very realistic. It's why the shadows move on the aircraft as they should, and you get the right kind of glare effects, although sometimes they can be a little too intense. But overall, I have seen much, much worse. However, the clouds are a problem. Now you see, the clouds in War Thunder are basically built in layers with a particle effect that runs between them to give them volume. You can see the layers if you fly around the very edges of a large cloud bank. If you get very close in on the edges, you can actually see the layers that the cloud is built from. They're built in like 2D plates stacked on top of one another with a particle effect in between. Now this in itself, well, it's not the best looking cloud I have ever seen. But at exactly the same time, it is by far not the worst looking cloud I've seen either. It's completely serviceable for the environment of War Thunder. However, there is one serious problem with these clouds. They do not respect global lighting. Now, if they did, when you flew into a cloud, your aircraft would go dark, or reflections, or at least the majority of reflections would stop, or they would dullen off, because the aircraft is no longer in direct sunlight. However, you can see here, I'm now flying in a very thick cloud, but the aircraft is lit exactly the same way that it was outside of the cloud, including getting the reflections coming off the engine cowling as we're flying through. The cloud doesn't actually block the environmental light. But more than that, the cloud doesn't actually block the reflections of light either. Now those of you with sharp eyes or viewing this in 1080p60 can probably already see this, but for those of you who can't, as you can see there, we have three aircraft still alive. Two of these aircraft are in a squad. Now, I'll zoom in to make this nice and clear for everybody. And there we are, one, two, and three. These are the three enemy aircraft that we're actually missing at the moment, with these two that are flying close together actually being the two enemy aircraft that are in a squad. So how exactly are we seeing these three and why are their dots white? Dots at a distance are normally black. Well, there is actually a black dot there, but the black dot in War Thunder isn't really black. It's actually a blackish grey and it blends into the clouds, especially the colour they are now, extremely well. However, to replicate the effect of being able to see a reflection on an aircraft at long range, there is a white flash that all aircraft emit. You often won't notice it at 
you know, out in the open, clear sky, although if you're looking for it, you will see it. However, it stands out inside of clouds like this extremely well, making white dots that are completely visible. To be clear, these BV-238s are at about uh, somewhere between 8 to 10 kilometers range at this point, and I can see them clear as daylight. Now, as we get closer to them, or if you zoom in on the, the dots, what actually happens, using the in-game zoom of course, not the, uh, the, the one I'm using here in the rendering software, but if you zoom in on them, what actually happens is the dot changes from just being a dot being rendered in the distance to trying to recreate the 3D model of the enemy aircraft. When that happens, the way the dot responds disappears and the way the reflection spot disappears. So zooming in, or as you get close, these dots will disappear. Somebody's activated an order here, so the BV-238, this is the one that isn't in a squad, has just appeared. I actually lost the other two here, but I will get them back. I just couldn't miss the opportunity to take down a BV that was right there. But yeah, anyways, as I was saying, as you approach in and get closer inside of the cloud, eventually these dots will disappear. Usually when you get within two kilometers of the target. At that point, you are flying blind to try and locate them because the game is no longer rendering a dot for a marker through the clouds anymore. It's now rendering the actual 3D model of the aircraft and the way it interacts with the environment is slightly different. However, if you do not use the in-game zoom, up until around the two kilometer area, sometimes at three kilometers, it can vary on the map and what the lighting conditions are that the game is trying to replicate at that particular time, you will have a reflection through dark cloud, providing you are flying in daylight in a situation where a reflection would be created if there was no cloud present. Now the same thing applies from reverse if you're flying through nice white fluffy cloud. As I said, the black dot is still there, you just don't, can't see it very well. If you're flying through white fluffy cloud, the black dots will render through the cloud in exactly the same manner, but you will not be able to see the white reflection that we're spotting here because obviously the cloud is white and it just blends in and disappears. But this is how people are locating you in clouds. You will often see pilots, experienced pilots that know what they're looking for when they can't find an enemy aircraft, go into the cloud, into the thickest part of the cloud. And you might think, well, why the hell are they going there? Well, the reason why they're going there is once they're inside, they're basically surrounded by a uniform colour, and by rotating the camera and not zooming in, they can see the dots as if they were a black dot on a white background or a white dot on a black background. Now, you'll see the render here. The two BV-38s got around us, and they've gone into a dive. Now, we're getting the red boxes here at the moment. These BV-238s, one is going to get shot down. The other one, as you can see, has disappeared. Now, let's just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, and once again, we can see the white dot being rendered. Now at this point, all spotting has been lost in that area, so we cannot actually see the aircraft itself, but I'm about to come out of the bottom of the cloud, and you're going to see the transition from the white dot into the BV-238 as we gain vision on the target. And here we go, the cloud is starting to break, we're coming out of the bottom, just holding visual at the moment, and then as we finally breach the cloud, white dot turns into our red marker for the BV-238. And there we have it. That's how experienced pilots in War Thunder that know what they're looking for, that have spent some time in the game and understand how the game's rendering actually works, are either spotting you from inside of clouds or spotting you while you are inside of a cloud. They're going inside and using the cloud itself to uniform the background colour and then they're looking for either a white or a black dot depending on the colour of the cloud that gives away your location and because these dots render at pretty much all ranges outside of if you're flying in some very specific environmental conditions such as if you're flying with the sun to your back your dot will not actually render until much closer ranges to simulate a pilot being blinded by having the sun in their face so in, in that situation this won't work try and fly with the sun to your back and you become much harder to spot even using this. But otherwise, this is how pilots are actually spotting you inside of the clouds. Now, this probably won't always work. If Gaijin ever changes how their clouds uh, operate in respect to respecting global lighting and ever changes how the rendering works for how dots can be visually rendered even though a cloud is blocking line of sight at distance, immediately this will no longer work. But until that changes, this is how people are actually pulling it off. So I hope that answers the questions. As always, guys,
check the video description down below for links to my social media and to my Twitch and to my Patreon if you'd like to help support me. As always, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more. And until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies. Oh, there wasn't enough kills in this match either, so have another one. <laughs>